Hi guys, so I'm gonna try and make a real quick video for you today. I'm sorry, there is some construction work going on outside, so it might be noisy, I hope not too much, but the light is in the, in the other room is just terrible. Um, I just wanna say before I even start this video um, that I'm very sorry, I won't be able to post very frequently or very much our videos that require a lot of editing or a lot of scripting or anything before uh, in the future month. Um, just because I don't want to go into too much detail about that because it's very depressing and stressful but basically I got a very short notice that my landlord, my owner, wants to sell the flat that I'm renting at the moment which is totally his right, I mean he owns the flat so yeah but um, basically just to explain a little bit for you why it's so stressful and why it's gonna be a bit of a trouble for me to keep with my regular schedule um, I am supposed to get the results for the competitive exam that I did a while back in like two weeks. If I am, um, if I pass those exams, that means I need to prepare for the oral part of those exams as well. So that means I really need to study a lot. And the oral part is in June. So we are already almost in May. And my landlord wants me to leave for June. Just to give you an idea. Um, on top of that, he hasn't really respected the law. You're supposed to warn the uh, the person renting your flat three months ahead, um, which he did not do before the end of like the contract. And my contract ends in June, so he hasn't respected it at all. It's like just a month, so it's a bit of a difficult situation in which I will have to be maybe in like a conflictual situation with him even though he's very nice and stuff I just you know I can't be left without any house just because I want to be nice to him when he hasn't respected the law but it's very stressful for all of those reasons and even more because renting I mean finding a flat in Paris is so difficult so I am in a very uneasy and pleasant and stressful and just not my situation at all worrying a lot not sleeping very well um, worrying about money about the future and think even considering going back to my hometown I mean a lot of things are going on so I'm sorry if I don't feel a lot anyway enough of that I am going to try and be a little bit more positive today and film for you a recent read it's been a while but since the exams are over and I haven't been a good student preparing for those oral that I'm not I'm not sure I'm gonna go to uh, I have had time to read so um, I read a few books that I'm not going to show in this video, but basically I read a few books about the literary history of the 16th, 17th and 18th century, just for my personal knowledge and because I enjoy sometimes reading things like that. Um, so now let's get into the interesting part, I suppose. So the first book I read was um, Le Lys dans la Vallée by Balzac. So Balzac is a very famous French author, you may know. Um, he's often, I mean, talked in discussions when you talk about Flaubert and Maupassant. I'm not a big fan of Balzac, he has written a lot of books and he's known as one of the master of realism and description and not only realism because he also adds sometimes very um, magical and very spiritual little things to his books. Um, the reason why I don't really like Balzac, however, is more because I find the style to be very dry, very um, light and not very deep or sensual or very... Like if you were to compare it to Flaubert, I think for example Flaubert you could just linger on a sentence forever and ever and you can make you know, sentences echo to one another, there is a beauty in the words, there is a beauty in the rhythm, there is like a depth in how you analyze a chapter, a paragraph, a sentence, whereas for Balzac I feel like it's really hard to get into the writing because it's so dry, you can't even like, you know, pass through. So it took me about, I think, three quarters of the book before I really got into it but it was interesting because this is a story that's kind of similar to the um, sentimental education which is my favorite book um, however in my opinion but that's my opinion it really doesn't compare like I have to admit I shed a few tears at the end because it, it was a 
beautiful and was very moving and touching but at the same time it took me like three quarters of the book before I really got into it before I really liked the characters um, you follow basically the life of a young man who falls in love when he's like in the countryside he falls in love with a woman who's married and has children and whatnot and they live this very platonic relationship that's not very much uh, really lived or even confessed um, but yeah, I'm not gonna spoil the end for you in case you haven't read it. Um, it's definitely easier in a way than compared to the sentimental education because the sentimental education is longer. I think it's a lot more complex, many more characters. It's like, it's. I honestly feel like this would be almost like a draft, you know? So for me, I'm glad I read it finally, but you honestly didn't make me like Balzac. Um, then I read this one, which is on the list for the competitive exam next year and it's uh, played by Marivaux. Um I already talked about Marivaux, I think, in one of my videos but he's a play writer from the 18th century. Um, um, what could I tell you? I didn't really like it, to be honest. The 18th century is not my favorite century at all. I would even prefer the 17th century. Um, but... Um, yeah, I don't really like it. I didn't find it very interesting or particularly groundbreaking or innovative in any way. Um, it is the story... How, how could I describe? Basically, it's it rely or it's centered around the question of who was unfaithful in the first place, women or men. So first of all, so yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a very interesting question. I don't think it's a very relevant and I don't think there's any really like, I don't know, whatever. So basically they have those two couples, two women and two men. The couples, one woman, one man, they are brought up together. They are in this secretive place where they are not meeting anyone else. They don't know anything about the world. And one day they meet. Um, I mean, all, all of that is organized obviously by external, exterior persons. And so they meet and it's up to the public to see who is gonna be in faithful the first, in the first place. Um, I didn't like it, I didn't think it was really interesting, but yeah, that's just me. Then I read this one, and this is not a fiction work, it's about literary history, I suppose, or literature. It is the Egyptian literature written in French in, uh, yeah, 18th and um, 19th and 20th century. Um, what could I tell you? Well, basically, I'm pretty sure you know that France was first of all, a colonizing country, so we colonize a lot of places and therefore we force them to learn French. Um, it's also a language that's spoken in countries that haven't been colonized, like Egypt wasn't technically colonized by the French, Napoleon Bonaparte did go to Egypt and did things there, but I don't really think it qualifies as colonization like you would talk about for Algeria or even, um, you know, um, other African, black African countries. Um, but yeah, there are there are other examples, you know, like that. Um, so, for example, Belgium and Luxembourg and Switzerland, you know, we haven't colonized them, but they speak French in some, part, in some parts and some writers do write in French. Other people, other artists, other writers who, you know, immigrated to France or just learned French did write in French, uh, like Beckett, for example. So, you know, there are different reasons why some people would write in French and in Egypt it's a very interesting story, I think, because it's, um, um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as saying it is a choice because obviously there are other power dynamics going on, but while they were colonized by the English, they deliberately chose to uh, for like intellectual or artistic purposes to use French more than English and obviously to use Arabic as well. And um, I really enjoy reading more and learning more about um, people who are not French but who write in French. I think it's very important to recognize this part of our, as French people, this part of our French literary history. Um, and I would actually love if I could, but my life is apparently not going this way, but uh, if I could do a PhD, I would actually like to do something about the French, uh, written in French Egyptian literature and see how, you know, it's 
I have two specific authors I'd like to explore and research to see how it creates some tension in their works, but also how it impacts their view of the world, their society and whatnot, and their, yeah, just everything about that. So it was really interesting and I definitely liked it, but it's also very saddening in a way because a lot of authors, their books are not longer published or even just, you can't find them anywhere anymore, so I think it's just very sad. Then I read um, Le Livre des Jours by Taha Hussein, so I think it, it would be translated as The Book of Days. Um, it is basically the autobiography of Taha Hussein when he was, I mean it's not a complete autobiography, it starts from the childhood and goes until I would say the late teenagehood or just teenagehood I would say. Um, it's a big classic in Arabic or even in Egyptian and even Arabic uh, literature because it is one of the first um, childhood autobiography written in Arabic. I did enjoy it, I find it very... I mean, Tausen is um, a very famous Egyptian writer. He was born... he wasn't born blind actually, He but he became blind when he was really young. Um, and so you have all of these very interesting different sides to the book. It's about the, first of all, his life, and then Egyptian society, and then just being, you know, blind and how you feel things, and also how you are treated in this society. It deals a lot with education, religion, science. Um, yeah, I did really like it, and I want to read more um, of the house. Then, finally, I read Memoirs of a Woman Doctor by Nawal El Sadawi. So I'm preparing a video on Nawal El Sadawi, so I'm trying to read more books by her. This is also, um, I mean, it is not an autobiography, but it is very much inspired by her life, and it follows the step of a young a woman who is obviously um, Egyptian and who studies medicine and becomes a doctor and gets married and finally finds herself very unhappy in his marriage and it's about feminism, discovering oneself, empowerment and the relationship you have with your body when you are always made to feel like there is something to be ashamed of, there is something to control, there is something to hide um, I really definitely love Nawal Sadawi as a writer and as a woman. I think she's so inspiring, brave and courageous. And there is something so strong and accurate in the way she writes. It hits you right in the feels. So, yeah. And, oh yeah, no. Uh, last book that for some reason I can't find anymore. I don't know where I put it. I read some short stories by René Vivien, who was a an English writer who also used to write in French and even chose like a French sort of name. Um, René Vivien wrote poetry and short fiction. Uh, she wrote about sensuality and homosexuality. She was a lesbian. So there is a lot of things going on around the themes of identity, sexuality, um, gender relationships. Even I would say sometimes it deals with the non-binary because it's very unsure. Um, I didn't really like, to be honest, the style of writing. To me, it really felt like a lot of English writers and I don't really like it. I mean, there are some English writers that I like, like Mary Shelley, Oscar Wilde, Percy Shelley as well, I do like. Um, but very frequently I find it, I, you know what, kind of like with Balzac, I find it a bit, not necessarily dry, but I feel like there is not enough connection between the parts, between the sentences, there is not enough material to basically hold the story together and make it believable enough, like there is a world, you know when you write a book and what I really like for with Flaubert for example, it's that there is a complete world that's like almost autonomous and there is no little blank space that the fictures or make you think, oh yeah, that's fiction, because it's so well constructed, so deep, so rich, and I think this is something that I really likes with English literature. It's almost like the sentence are put together and sometimes there's something missing, um, at least in how I feel when I read English literature. It's it's not as rich and as full, and that's something I 
I bought this knee a little bit. But yeah, I hope you enjoy watching this video, guys. I am gonna be filming a currently reading that's gonna be on my Patreon. So if you enjoy my videos and if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon where you can help me with one dollar a month, and you have access to videos, posts, pictures, Q and A's, and it's just a really nice way to help me keep on making these videos while trying to live the life. So yeah, thank you for watching, let me know what you've been reading and I'll see you soon. Bye!